Hello there, welcome to the channel and the today's topic is functional programming in C++ using lambdas. So lambdas are available in C++ 11 onwards. So this video is applicable only if you are using C++ 11, 14, 17 and whatever that will going to come C++ 20. So before trying to understand how to write functional programming in C++, we need to understand what is meant by functional programming. So functional programming in a nutshell means that we should write our programming functions in a way which is similar to the way we write our mathematical functions. So what is the difference? Let, let's see a mathematical function called fx. And I am calling this function as fx square. So every time I pass x, I get x square. Let's also consider a poly polynomial kind of function which we say x plus y square. So formula will be x square plus y square plus 2xy kind of thing. So whenever I pass 10, I'll always get 100, correct? Whenever I pass 5, I'll always get 25 in this particular case. In here, if I pass f with 2 comma 2, I'll always get 16. If I pass f of 5 into 5, 3, I'll always get 64 because it acts on a formula. No, now what is very specific about the function, mathematical function? In this particular function, everything depends upon the input variable. Even in this particular function, everything depends upon the input variables. Each function is independent. It is not dependent on anything outside of this line. This is the first thing. Second thing is this function doesn't change anything which is being provided inside this. So they are immutable. They are creating a new value. They are not changing anything x, y that is coming over here. So what functional programming tells us that we should write code in a way we write mathematical functions. You might be saying that no, no, we are writing same thing. So just to remember that we never write a mathematical function like x plus plus correct we never write x plus plus if you want to return something you you must not have seen this kind of mathematical function anywhere in your life if you want something you'll say x plus one so that it returns new value it doesn't change anything so that's the way functions are written and functional programming means we will write all our functions in a similar way and lambda helps us in doing that let's see how now before we use lambda to write uh, functional programming Let's just recap what are lambda. So in lambda in C++ consists of these three things. These are, this is a valid syntax of lambda and things will be compiled. Of course, it should be compiled with a warning. So you'll see a warning and nothing will be there. So if you forget this for a while, this is just the normal way we are writing a function with parameters. This is not taking any argument. This is the implementation. I can write any implementation over here. Let's say I'm writing hello world. So let me go ahead and compile and see what happens. Same warning again and nothing gets printed because this is an in-place anonymous lambda function but I'm not calling it. And how I call a function by doing this. Now let me go ahead and compile it again. No warning and I managed to compile it. Hello world is printed, right? So that's the way a lambda is created and called. Now since lambda is a function, it can return a value, let's say it return 100. So how to specify return type? Return type is specified like this. This is the syntax of specifying return type. Since this is a function which is executing and returning a value, I can take ret value inside it and I can print ret value. Okay, clear, compile, run. I can print, I saw I have printed 100. So, just like any other function, the lambda function can also take some input parameter like base value and returning base value plus 100. So, while calling this over here, I have to pass some value which is the base, base value. So, let's see. Now, I am getting 200 which is the correct output. Now, this is the way of creating and calling the lambda function then and there itself. We don't need to do that. We can actually store the, since lambda is a function, we can actually store the output in a function pointer. We can use C++ auto, but um, the 
auto is a good way of doing it but to understand what actually happened we'll use std function to hold the function pointer the template argument is what is the return type what are the parameter it is taking so let's say this is my function pointer and now my ret value will be coming from after calling the function with say 150 okay let me go ahead and compile and run it's saying 250 so that's the way i'm creating a function taking the function pointer and calling it at the place where it is required now let's see how we write functional code for this lambda using the lambda function so now i'm creating a function called lambda demo empty function and let me call this function over here so i don't need this for now i'll comment it so now what i want to do is that create something like this so the way to create this particular thing is that we'll say st dot function so it will return int it will take int and i say f x square the name of the function and it's a lambda function which takes a x returns a int and it returns x into x x square so i can call f x square with let's say 10 let me go ahead and print it i have to put semicolon after this lambda let me clear it compile it and run it again and we can see that if we pass 10 we receive 100 if we pass 5 we receive 25 yes so you might be saying okay that's fine i can do it with any normal function so let's talk about this polynomial function so now not this this so it takes two argument right int x int y so let's take int x int y now how to calculate this using lambda you can do it like this way let's say what is x square int x square is equal to i'm calling a lambda function which takes int x returns int implementation is return x into x and i'm calling this function with x which is passed inside this particular lambda function similarly i can create y square and int y it also returns int and i am saying return y into y and i am passing y over here and say 2xy equal to again a lambda function which takes int x int y returning int i am saying 2 in return 2 into x into y and calling this function with x and y so these are in place calling which we just saw down here now i am returning it uh, x square plus y square plus 2 x y okay now if i say 5 comma 3 let's see what's the output 64 it's 8 and 8 into 8 64 so this works fine you know what i did i have created three separate lambda functions inside it and all of them if you can see from the fact that none of them modifies any parameter that comes inside this this particular function so we are using this parameter not modifying it so we are honoring the way functional programming works and this is a purely functional code it has no side effects now we'll see what is the benefit of it apart from being a functional code these functions will not pollute the global non namespace and will not remain there all the time it can run on a separate thread without worrying about any synchronization mechanisms right now let's talk about something called capture list so what is capture list capture list i mean let's say if i have a uh, local variable over here local var equal to 100 
inside the lambda if i want to just print the local var i cannot do that it should give me a compiler a compilation error and it it is uh, and if you so see the compilation error it will say local var not declared undeclared here why it happens because if, even if i am defining this within the scope of a function this is a fairly independent function we cannot use it so there are another way to pass these local variable in the lambda is by calling it inside the capture list so if i put it inside the capture list things should be fine and code should compile yes code is compiled the other thing about passing it in the capture list is that it honors the immutability like we cannot change this so if i go ahead and compile it it will say cannot assign variable in a non-mutable lambda okay so inside the lambda is by default non-mutable because it's it is a construct of functional programming and you cannot change it inside the code but if you want to change it you can pass it by reference because reference is an inbuilt mechanism of c plus plus can't help it you cannot change the meaning of reference for one particular case so reference is actually referring this value and in the the impact of this will be visible outside if i change this value it will be changed outside also okay so that's the way we use capture list to pass local variable by value as well as by reference so let's say i my x and y are in they are just local variables so what will i do i'll pass x and y over here let me get rid of this and let's see in that case i don't need to pass any arguments I am not passing any argument that means I have to change the definition of function pointer it takes void now and here also I am not passing anything so let me go ahead and compile it and it works fine similarly in here I don't need to do I can pass x okay I don't need to pass any parameters I can pass y in the capture list i don't need to pass any parameters over here i can pass x and y in the capture list similarly since i am taking nothing in the parameter list i don't need to pass anything over here to i am just invoking it because x and y is already available let me clear it compile and run works fine so this is the way capture list are useful but if there are multiple um, variables present here and then we have to specify everything one by one then it's a complicated thing what we can do is that we can say equal to equal to means all the local variables will be passed by value which is non-mutable run fine similarly here also we can just say equal to equal to equal to and the end result will be same okay so you have seen and one more thing that we don't need to explicitly specify the return type mean most of the time for built-in types it will deduct automatically and it will not create a problem but just to show, show that this is the way return type is being declared in lambda i am using it over here okay and if i, I want to pass everything by reference i can say i'm percent so in this case i can change anything though if i say a x plus plus for example if i say x plus plus over here let's see the output should be 64 now it's coming 81 so it's changing something which should not be changed so second time if i call the function the output will be exponentially incorrect looks i'm calling this function now twice so let me clear it and call it first time it's saying 81 next time it's saying 100 but if i don't allow this particular thing to happen every time it will give a same output so you you now see why immutability is important that every time you call the function in this case if the even if the function called on two different cores or two different threads it, it works fine so that's the way you can use write functional code in in c plus plus now one last thing i would like to show you about uh, the usage of lambda function inside the class function so let me create while class demo okay so let me create a class class let's say abc 
it has two variables called int a int b and uh, we can say a equal to 10 int b equal to 20 in c plus plus 11 you can do something like this and in the public area i create a sum function uh, let's say int sum okay now if i want to create a lambda function inside this okay and i want to return return a plus b over here okay and i am returning the value of it like this but if i go ahead and run this code uh, this will not work because for lambda function a and b are not part of this scope we cannot say a and b like this this will also not work i'll tell you why because a and b are not declared inside this local scope but one thing which is implicitly coming in c++ is declared and that is called this so we can pass this and we can say this a this b okay now the code should compile to say after the class i need to put a semicolon and the code is compiled and if i want to call this let me call from inside lambda function i say a b c a1 and i am saying c out a1 dot sum and just return it from here so that that code below is not executing and run it it's saying 30 because a is 10 b is 20 and you know what even if the, we can use template also let's say int a value int b value and a equal to a value b equal to b value and i can call this as a template argument saying that 100 200 so it should be showing 300 and let's assume 300 so there are multiple permutation combination you can do in this particular case so as you have seen that this is not written and not changing anything so that's all about how you write functional code in c using lambda i hope i managed to uh, explain what is functional programming and why it is important thanks a lot guys thanks for watching please do not forget to subscribe for regular updates thank you good day